So we looked at this practical, we did this uh, as a practical last week. Can anybody remember what the trend was? As I go down the group, what happens to the solubility of the hydroxides? They become more soluble. They become more soluble, yeah. So they become more soluble down the group. So magnesium hydroxide is only sparingly soluble, um, or it's insoluble, um, and then it goes gradually down, and barium hydroxide is soluble in water. And you would have seen this. How did you see these? What colour were they? What colour they were? White precipitates, yeah. Uh, which is what you'd expect for group two. Um, it's transition metals that gives you the colours. Okay, so what will we do? And we can write ionic equations. So if I've got magnesium ions in aqueous solution and I add to them hydroxide ions, like so, I'm going to make MgOH2 solid. The same would go for calcium as well. Calcium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 hydroxide ions is going to give me calcium hydroxide. Whoops, solid, like so. Uh, these two are soluble, so um, I wouldn't see a precipitate at all. Um, an important use. Um, oh, we'll come on to the sulfates in a minute. Uh, so as we turn our attention now to the sulfates, what happens to the solubility of my sulfates as I go down the groove? Down the groove. They become less soluble. Yeah, it's the opposite trend. So down the groove, they become less soluble. Um, so magnesium sulfate is soluble, and then they get to sparingly soluble for calcium and then strontium and barium are both insoluble. So again, we can write the general, if I just do the general ionic equation, obviously group two are gonna be M2 plus aqueous, plus my sulfate ion, SO4, T minus aqueous, is gonna give me M SO4 solid, like so. Do you need to know why? You don't need to point no. out. M is just any group two. So, so, sorry. Yeah, M, so M could equal um, calcium, strontium, or barium. Uh, not magnesium, because magnesium is soluble. Um, and you may um, be aware, uh, if you've looked at the, the uses, is that um, the fact that this is insoluble um, is quite useful because you can take... Um, this is a tablet. Um, I don't know if you've heard of a barium meal before, but some people have. Um, barium is obviously very toxic, but because it's insoluble, it just goes straight for our body. Our body doesn't absorb it at all because it's in, insoluble. Um, if uh, we took, if we use the hydroxide, oh, that would be nasty. Yeah, very alkaline and very toxic as well. Not, not very good. Okay. Another good thing about the fact that this being insoluble is that this is actually used to test for the sulfate ion. So if I've got sulfate ions in solution, if I add, a, if I add oh, whoops, um, barium 2 plus ions to a solution and it's got sulfate ions in it, like so, I will see a precipitate of barium sulfate. Um, Does anybody know what we generally add? as a barium? Barium uh, Well, yeah, we could do, because um, it would be sort of, we normally use um, barium chloride solution um, to actually do it. But anything with barium in the soluble, it'll give me a nice white precipitate of barium sulfate, and that's my test for the sulfate ion there. So, um, just have a look at it. 